Okay, let's have five minutes of hearing.
the first truth we have to become aware of and maintain is that God's universe, God's infinity, is in perfect order and completeness. And as we become aware of any point of our infinity, i.e. as we look at each other, or as we look at anything, anywhere of infinity, what's really there is God's perfect order infinitely omnipresent, perfect order and wholeness. And as we maintain that awareness, then spiritual truth infallibly is experienced. And that spiritual truth looks like situational, conceptual harmony. But if we try to do it the other way around, so that we now have something of the conceptual experience, the the human sense of experience, no matter what it is, infinitely, and now try to realize truth there, realize truth about the concept or witness truth happening through or as the concept, we fail. One is sowing to the flesh in the orthodox language, the old biblical language. You're sowing to the flesh. You're looking at the concept and trying to understand the truth that should be evident as this conceptual world or or situation, that's sowing to the flesh. We're looking materially and trying to witness material harmony. It's impossible. There isn't any. The reverse is sowing to the spirit where we realize that any place our awareness is is the fullness of God in perfect order, in perfect wholeness. We can't see it, so there's no use looking for it. But we can be aware that it's there. We can be aware of the truthful presence, even though to this dim human sense, or any of this dim human set of faculties, we cannot experience it. But we can be aware, the truth is, despite appearance, that the wholeness of God is right here. All of it, in perfect order, and that is sowing to the Spirit. And now the fruits of Spirit are infallible. And again, it's all by the degree that we're able to stay high in truth awareness and maintain that truth awareness throughout our experience, even throughout this next five minutes. How do I look at what appears to be some discordant or dissatisfying or lacking or painful limited, insecure experience. And yet, right in the midst of it, make sure I'm lifted and maintained, even during these five minutes or this hour, in a state of awareness that recognizes truth is the only presence, God is the only presence, And God's universe is always, eternally, in perfect 
order, divine order and wholeness. There's nothing missing. There is nothing separate. Nothing of good, nothing of God, nothing of wholeness of being, nothing of love, nothing of life, nothing of abundance or plenty or prosperity or opportunity is missing. Nothing of peace is missing in the whole world. Nothing. Everything is divine order. Everything is divine peace. Every single being visible on the planet and every single being invisible on the planet is nothing but divine peace and love and life and order. The whole of infinity is what you are. And you can experience it right now. Anything of infinity you can experience right now. Anything of divine wisdom you can know right now. Because it's already what you are. It's your very consciousness. Your very consciousness this minute and eternally, of course, is omniscience. Is omnipresence. Is omnipotence. Is infinity embodying the whole of itself, being the whole of itself, not unfolding, not evolving, not emerging, not one step away, not one method or process away, not one adjustment away, not one learning away, not one more truth statement away, not one more aha or click away, It is what you are. It is what this world is. The divine order and completeness of God. Your consciousness, despite all that you know of it, everything, every grain of what you know of it, is just one thing, actually, God. It's that state of being, that truth of being we've been searching for, trying to learn even trying to awaken to, and yet all this time we have been and eternally will be the whole of it itself already existing. So as we start recognizing, consciously recognizing, being aware of every place where our awareness is, not as the way it appears, but as the divine wholeness and order of God's entirety, then we are sowing to the Spirit. And then spiritual fruitage becomes evident.
So let's rest for 10 minutes, consciously realizing that anywhere I am and anywhere I can place my attention is actually the divine order of the whole of God. The whole of God is there in perfect order.
now. If everywhere in your consciousness, as your consciousness, in your world, in your infinity, everywhere, every being, everything, every place, every condition, every activity, is God, the wholeness of God in perfect divine order, already, do you have to demonstrate anything? Do you have to evidence it? Can you evidence it? Unless you think that we, in this foggy state of awareness, have to apply some mental hocus-pocus in order to evidence that which to this sense is invisible so that it is now visible. Have we thought that? Yes, we have. But what do we know? Your consciousness and mine, 100% of it, is already God. Is the fullness of being in perfect order and completeness unconditionally, irrepressibly, think about that word, there isn't anything that can repress or compress or hide, obscure that which is. The presence of God is irrepressibly tangible, visible, Manifest. So, the very consciousness that we are, that in the foggy state thinks it has to play some mental hocus pocus to evidence that which to it seems invisible, so that it which seems invisible can now become visible, is the very consciousness seeing the fullness of itself. But we take ourselves away from the visibility and the tangibility of the fullness of ourselves by looking for the good conceptually. There's the separation. There's the only separation. And it's, again, just a sense. But that sense is experienced. Because consciousness is experience. But there is the only sense of separation from the infinity of truth we are. We're sowing to the flesh in the biblical language. We're entertaining the idea that concept is real. At least at this level of experience, the human level of experience, we say, the concept is real. This body needs healing. This business or this bank account needs prospering. We need more opportunity. We need truthful purpose. We need to stop the wars of the world. We need to stop the greed and the ravaging of our planet. 
We need loving relationship. We need reliable companionship. We need, we need, we need. We'd like a better home. We'd like to live in a new neighborhood. Right there is the only way that truth can be separated in experience. God doesn't demonstrate itself any more than the ocean demonstrates wetness. God is already. And because God, spirit, consciousness, truth, is the only presence, then that is the only state of being that is harmony, that is life. that is abundance, without limit, just as there's no limit to the wetness of the ocean. Jesus knew this. No matter how many people seem to need health and food and happiness and prosperity, he was able to be an infinite Measure, just like the ocean is infinite wetness. We can imagine Jesus as the ocean saying, come and have as much wetness as you wish. Sometimes it looks like money. Sometimes it looks like health. Sometimes it looks like relationship. Looks like peace. But there's an infinite beingness right here of harmony, life, love, abundance doesn't matter what we name the concept, the moment we realize that wherever, well, first of all, step back, the moment we realize that 100% of this consciousness that is you is God, fully manifest, fully tangible, fully visible, irrepressibly so. There is nothing else. Therefore, There is no other state that could obscure it, that could hide it, keep it hidden from tangible beingness. But because whatever's going on as consciousness is experience, if we're looking conceptually, we cannot see, we cannot be truth. All the while, the whole truth is there, just the same as we had the hand and the shadow. If we're looking in and of the shadow, trying to find the real hand, we can't. It's impossible. We can only look in and of our, the consciousness we're being. So if we're being the consciousness of the shadow, that's all that's available to us. Truth is not there. It's not available there. Yet, it's right there. It's right there. And the only way the untruth seems to be there is because the truth is there. Except we're having a a shadowy experience of it, a lower or or a dark or dim or foggy experience, sense of it. But if the truth were not there, the appearing lack or discord or disease could not even be apparent to a foggy sense. Truth is already manifest. We don't have to manifest it. Truth is already demonstrated, if you like. The demonstration is done. The evidence is there already. If we think we have to demonstrate something, there is the very reason we'll never be able to. If we think there's some mental or some awareness or some truth process that has to go on, some mental hocus-pocus that has to go on, 
in order to make what appears to be invisible, visible, there again is the very reason we'll never witness it. There isn't any visibility but spirit. There's not two types of visibility. There's not spiritual visibility and then material visibility. There is only God. Therefore, how can there be any other type of God? God is one. One presence, one being, one form, one visible, one, one, one. You can't get two out of one. Therefore, there's one visibility, and it's already visible. There's one tangibility, and it's already tangible. But we take ourselves away from that experience by believing the concept. Right there, we've separated ourselves. In experience only, but ironically and beautifully, not in actuality. And that's why it's very true that the moment, the very moment we start recognizing spirit, ignoring completely and utterly and forever the way things or beings or amounts or situations appear to be, recognizing there's no truth at all, ever, in the appearance. And what's really there is truth, fully manifest, fully visible, fully tangible. God's entire infinity in perfect order and completeness. One point of omnipresence in perfect order and completeness. As, happening as, 100% of your consciousness. Therefore, wherever you place your awareness of consciousness, there is the fully manifest, fully tangible, fully visible, perfectly divinely ordered and completeness of God. demonstrated already, wet already, the ocean could say, whole and complete already. Therefore, do you have any responsibility anywhere you place your consciousness, anywhere, your body, your family, your love, your home, your bank account, your business, Any place you take your awareness, there is the fullness of God. The whole of God in divine order, in perfect order. The whole of infinity existing right there in perfect order. Aware to us, our awareness being the situational perfect order. There's a, it appears as a place, a situation, let's say, a condition, a being, an amount. It's a situation, a place. Yeah? Well, right there is the whole of God in perfect order. The whole of infinity is there. Fully manifest as one, nothing separate, fully manifest, tangible to experience, visible to experience, because experience is the visibility. Visibility is the experience. Experience is the tangibility. Experience doesn't see something tangible or visible. Experience is the visibility, being the experience of itself. 
Experience is the tangibility, being the experience of itself. Now, are you, meaning your sense of being, responsible for that place you've rested at in awareness? Or that being, that family member, this body or this body part or organ, this mind, this friend, this neighborhood, this bank account, this business? Are you responsible for customers, for clients? Are you responsible for that poor person over there who lives three doors down? Can you do anything? Is it your responsibility to demonstrate his or her health, to relieve him or her of migraine or depression or cancer? Can you do something? Oh, I know so much truth. I can help. I know what I'll do. I'll hold this person in truth. Because I'd like to. I'm full of love. And I'd love to do that for my fellow being. I'd love to. We've blown it. I can't hold you in truth because by doing so, I'm suggesting that you're not truth itself at the moment, fully able to hold itself in truth. I can't hold you in truth. You're already true. I can't hold the ocean in wetness. It's already wet. It doesn't need me. I know what I'll do. I'll sit in silence for you for five minutes. And through my silence, your healing will come, your wholeness will come. What utter nonsense. I'll pray for you. If ever anybody says that to you, run! Run away. Because their prayers are likely to do you some harm. (laughs) Likely to hold you in an illusory sense of your being. Of course, they're doing it unwittingly, and I shouldn't be so. You see, at any level of consciousness, we, we find beauty and, in, and good intention, beautiful intention. So, of course, when someone says, I'll pray for you, it's a beautiful thing. So we're only talking within our, ourselves, closed doors and closed audios. But what utter nonsense. The moment we realize that God already is, it's got nothing to do with us, And the evidence has nothing to do with us. The demonstration, so-called, has nothing to do with us. And it's the very fact that we've thought it has that keeps it obscured from experience. I need to evidence truth. Well, there, we've blown it. We can't. I'll sit in silence and then my health will become more apparent. Or my abundance will become more apparent. We can't. It's the same as saying we'll sit in silence and the ocean will get wetter. It can't get wetter than it is. You can't get wetter than the fullness of wetness. It's already wet. And if we don't know that, then that's our problem. It's not the ocean's problem. While we're suffering a lack of wetness right here in our experience... The ocean's beautifully wet. All we can do is awaken to God is. The ocean is. The fullness of God. Wherever I place the consciousness that is God, wherever awareness is, in the infinity of this consciousness that is God, heaven, there is the fullness of God because... Omnipresence is truth. 
whatever presence I'm aware of, there is omnipresence. The whole of God in perfect order, fully manifest, tangible, visible, and irrepressibly so. If we cannot see, if we cannot or are not experiencing the fullness of truth, everywhere about, unconditionally, it's not that it's invisible to the human sense and we have to now make it visible. It's not that we have to somehow demonstrate it or evidence it. It's not through any process, mental process, or what we've incorrectly named as truth process happening as our consciousness that we have to apply. Those are the very activities of consciousness that have kept truth hidden from our experience. What we have to do is realize that God already is. And God is all there is. There's nothing else to do. God is completely. There's nothing within God is that has to happen so that it now becomes visible to sense at any level of consciousness. God is. Nothing else is. Nothing else has to be to any level of consciousness. God is, and the fullness of God is, available tangibly, invisibly, experientially, as any level of consciousness, here and now, when that consciousness becomes the consciousness of truth instead of the conceptual sense. We have to sow spiritually in order to witness the spiritual beingness that we are. We cannot sow materially and witness the spiritual fruitage, the truth. It's impossible. In the same way we read um, in the Bible and in every other truth text of the world, but I'm more familiar with the Bible. We read that we have to send our good out, put our bread on the waters in order for that bread to come back. Well, it's the same thing. We have to see spiritually. We have to sow spiritually. Put the spiritual awareness awareness out in the waters. The waters are consciousness. Send the spiritual awareness out in the waters, on the water, as Awareness of every place we have happening as consciousness. I'm looking at you. I have to realize that God is. This illusory sense of you has no truth to it. I have to recognize, despite appearance, that God is. The whole of the infinity that God is in perfect order, fully manifest, tangible, visible, and irrepressibly so, is actually what's happening there. Now I've sown, or I've sent the bread out on the waters, and now I can be silent and reap the spiritual fruitage. Begin to evidence, begin to experience, is a better word, the truth. It'll begin to be revealed to that consciousness that is continually sowing to the spirit, being spiritual awareness. It's as if the the banana skin peels away to reveal the truth of the fruit, as you said. The concept peels away to reveal the truth. And it still looks conceptual to this sense, but now truthful concept. There is nothing here but truthful concept. 
There never is anything but truthful concept, but our foggy sense makes the concept, even the concept, look untruthful. Now, close eyes for a minute and go to those places in your world which starts at your mind, your body, and then outward, where you think you have a sense of responsibility. You feel responsible. And certainly you've lifted from material responsibility to spiritual responsibility now. I'm responsible for knowing the truth here. And I'd better hold on to that truth all day long and all night long because it's not looking so good. It's up to me. And start realizing that that him and that her and that it and that situation that condition, that activity actually is the whole of God in perfect divine order and completeness. This very minute perfectly manifest, tangible and visible. So, let go. Release God. Release your sense of responsibility. Go ahead and visit every him, every her, every it that you felt a spiritual responsibility towards and let go in the realization that God is the fullness and complete order of that him, her, or it.
God does not require your assistance or mine in order to be in order to be the tangible visible experience of perfect being perfect condition perfect amount what is needed is the awareness of that perfect condition, perfect being, perfect amount, already. God is already and only. Wherever you look, there I am. In the fullness of being, the fullness of amount, the fullness of condition and activity, the whole of heaven being that very place that very being, that very condition. Whatever you think, wherever you think, whatever you think of, there I am. I don't need you to do anything. I don't need you to demonstrate me, evidence me, make me visible or make me tangible. I just need your recognition. Because you are I. I just need you to recognize your truth. Recogn- recognize that you are I. And everything infinitely of you is I. You've only suffered because you've believed the way I looks conceptually. Instead of knowing all as I alone. as you now come back home, come back to the awareness that all is I. Already whole, already perfect, always tangible, always visible, then you're free.
Thank you.
Many beautiful healings are happening around the world as this group releases its spiritual responsibility. I can feel it happening. You feel it? You feel that deep, deep peace? You feel that experience of freedom? That is evidence as healings in the world. The freeing of God. Release God. Release yourself from all sense of responsibility. Finally, God is able to be the visibility it is. After this sense of responsibility, this sense of needing to demonstrate or evidence, needing to apply truth is released. And there is the evidence. Humans call it healing. But it's just revealing what's already there. None of us want to move, huh? Make no mistake that this sense of freedom we're experiencing looks like weapons being put down, cancers dissolving, love coming together, joy and opportunity and freedom and purpose being witnessed. Make no mistake about that unless you're entertaining the idea of two universes. One spirit, one happening here as you, and another one out there. Make no mistake that this freedom that we're experiencing is the freedom of our world, our universe. What more can we do how much greater love can we show to our world to our neighbors than this recognizing them and all as God and freeing God to be God. What greater love can we show? What greater love can we be for our world? And there's no greater love. And Jesus said it in this way, what greater love can I show you than to give up my life for you? What did he mean? Give up thinking of you as human. Know you as God. Submit to God as God. (coughs) 
and he took it further than anybody I think ever has by proving that his sense of body was unreal he gave it up for us and then proved that actually it is spirit here it is again with its holes in it just to prove to you that it's the same body the body that is Christ Buddha truth that's the only body What greater good can we do for our families, our community, our business, our practice, our customers, our patients, our clients, our world, than to release it as God? So to live and experience the freedom of God is. Thank you, thank you. I think the retreat's ended, hasn't it? <laughs> this one started off for the last of the day. Well, why don't we go and have some lunch? We don't need it, but... We can, if we wish, see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>